There are many stories in history that we should tremble to learn. The tragic horrors of humanity's deprivation often lurk just beneath the surface. But when someone comes around telling us of our sins, we should stop to listen. And in the 19th century, one man did. Hi, my name is Gabe Bauer, and this is Top Shelf History, where we combine great stories with great drinks. This is the Freeman. It is the cocktail I have made for you today based on the life of Frederick Douglass, a slave who found his way to both freedom and to be a voice for the voiceless. It is made with marula cream liqueur, moonshine, and cinnamon whiskey. Now, Frederick Douglass was born into slavery in Maryland in 1818. Although the exact date of his birth is unknown to him, what he did know was that suffering would be around every corner. He was separated very early on from his mother, only to be raised by his grandmother. And then at the age of six, he was sent over to the Y House, where he was eventually given to the Ald family. The Ald family would then take him to Baltimore, where he would enjoy only the first fruits of education, being taught to him by Sophia Ald. Although Sophia was quickly reprimanded by her husband Hugh for teaching Frederick anything at all. But although Sophia stopped teaching Frederick, he would not stop learning. In secret, he would continue to educate himself and the slaves. But eventually, Hugh would find out. And he sent him to the Covey farm. Now, Edward Covey, the farmer, was particularly brutal towards his slaves. And now, Frederick was one of them. Frederick would endure beatings daily until one day eventually he stood up and the two got into a two hour altercation. But despite the beatings, Frederick knew that slavery would not rob him of his dignity as he writes in his autobiography. From my earliest recollection, I date the entertainment of a deep conviction that slavery would not always be able to hold me within its foul embrace. And in the darkest hours of my career in slavery, this living word of faith and spirit of hope departed not from me, but remained like ministering angels to cheer me through the gloom. Now, in 1838, around the age of 20, Frederick finally had enough. He had enough of slavery, he had enough of the people who beat him, and he made a run for it, leaving from the city of Baltimore and making a break for New York, where he would eventually come to the house of David Ruggles. Now, David Ruggles was an abolitionist and was happy to take Frederick in. Eventually, Frederick Douglass would change his name to the name that we know him from. Originally, his name was Frederick Bailey, after his mom, but he changed it to Frederick Douglass to kind of help ward off all of the slave hunters. Now, after moving in with David Ruggles, continuing his education, beginning his new life, and marrying his first wife, Frederick was now on the offensive. He joined the abolitionists and fought to end slavery in America. His work was impactful, to say the least. Unsurprisingly, he quickly became a star in the abolitionist movement, but as he earned the respect of the abolitionists, he also earned the ire of the slaveholders. While giving a speech in 1843 in Pendleton, Indiana, as part of the Hundred Conventions Project, he was attacked by slaveholding sympathizers, which broke his hand so severely that it limited his functionality for the rest of his life. But Frederick Douglass had been attacked by slaveholders before. It didn't deter him then, and it wouldn't deter him now. He pressed on with the same fire that brought him out of slavery into the podium. When the Civil War broke out and continued to rage, Frederick Douglass actually got in a spat with Abraham Lincoln over the Emancipation Proclamation. Although the Emancipation Proclamation gave freedom to the slaves, it did not grant them equality in the eyes of the law. Although it is said that he would relent later with the passing of the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments, so much so that he was actually invited to Abraham Lincoln's funeral and to speak there by his wife. Following the war, he stayed active in political life, fighting for the equality of all black people in the country. And when he wasn't fighting for that, he was also fighting for the equality of women, being a staunch supporter of women's suffrage all the way up until the end of his life. He passed away on February 20th, 1895. Despite all the odds stacked against him, Frederick Douglass was still a man of great passion and great vision. And so today, we honor him in the only way that we know how. Let's get into our drink, the Freeman. 
Now, to start our drink, I wanted to go back to the African roots of so many of the slaves that were imported into America. Now, we can't necessarily say where Frederick Douglass's family hailed from, but I think we'll just cover the whole continent. So, for that, we are getting some Cape Marula cream. Uh, this is a uh, Marula cream liqueur that comes out of South Africa. So really cool flavors going on here. Possibly one of the most unique. I think that comes from the Marula fruit that is a big part of this liquor. It adds tremendous creaminess, really good base for our drink. Now we're going to put in one ounce of that into our shaker here. This is going to be delicious and it's only going to come out more as we add in our uh, additional ingredients here. The next ingredient that we're going to throw in is Appalachian Moonshine. And this is being put in for two reasons. One, it's indicative of the slave holding south that uh, Frederick Douglass found himself in, but it's also part of Appalachia. And Appalachia extends all the way from Tennessee and northern Georgia all the way up into just around Maine. So Maryland was definitely within the Appalachian Mountain range, and I felt that this was only the most appropriate to put into. So we're going to put in a half ounce. Just pour that out and get that on in there. Because now we have the base, we have the background of the African origin slaves, and then we also have the slave holders here, but now we need the fiery spirit that broke Frederick Douglass from the chains of slavery and made him into the icon that he eventually became in American culture. And for that, I felt it was only necessary that we went with Jack Daniels Tennessee Fire Whiskey, because there was a fire within Frederick Douglass's soul after all, and this will also give us some great body to our drink and really tie these two ingredients together. And I actually think it amplifies the marula flavor in the cream. So we're gonna throw in a half ounce of the Tennessee Fire Whiskey in here. Now that all of those are in together and they're starting to get to know each other, we have but one more ingredient to tie us all together because each of the words that came from Frederick Douglass's mouth had a particular bite to them. He was one of the better critics, I think, of American culture, especially during the time of the slaveholding South. And in doing so, you had a tremendous impact in listening to his words. And for that representation, I think it's only necessary that we throw in some bitters because it'll add some sharpness that mirrors the words that came from his speeches. And in that, I'm going to use chocolate bitters. This comes from Hello Cocktail Bitters, it's really good. I think it's going to tie our whole drink together. So we're going to put in about three splashes in here. So just one, two, three. Perfect. Next, we're just going to throw in a little bit of ice and we will get to shaking. One more ice in there. There we go. Now the great thing is, is that this drink is going to be served on the rock. So even after we're finished shaking it, we can just throw the whole thing into a glass. Tap that on. Throw on some flair for all of you viewers at home. And then we just take this on this little puppy out after some struggle. There it goes. Every drink requires a little bit of struggle after all. And then we get out our fancy little rocks glass. It's a little bit new. I like the green coloration here because it gives us something different, you know? And after all, this is a fairly not too colorful drink. So I think it, it's pretty good for the aesthetic. So let's pour in our drink here and look at that. Does that not look delectable? Oh my gosh, it looks fantastic. But this drink is not finished yet. Before we call it a drink, before we call it the free man, we need to get our garnish. And for that, we are going to turn to our garnishes that I've picked up here. Now, I am a mixologist and not a chocolatier and these are melting quickly, but uh, just know that the thought is there. Now, our whole, our whole desire here is that we have this chocolate medallion as sort of the bonds that held back Frederick Douglass and his slavery. But let's be real, he was able to break, three, break free of all of that. And so he was able to conquer it all and put it down. And there we have the Freeman. Let's give the Freeman a taste. Mmm. That is such a unique flavor. 
And the first thing you get is that marula cream and it's amplified in booziness by the moonshine and then it's also supported by that Tennessee Fire Whiskey. It's such a unique flavor, the marula, but overall, to kind of give you an idea of what I'm tasting here, it's like a creamy, cinnamony, chocolatey, delicious drink with a unique aftertaste that's coming afterwards. It's awesome. I, it's really quite remarkable. And this tastes like I'm sure freedom felt for Frederick Douglass. And that sounds like last call. One of the more incredible things about Frederick Douglass after he had escaped from the Alds and the Coveys in 1838, he started to continue his education and he found a life in New York when he met up with David Ruggles. But as he continued to make a name for himself, he also became very popular and his old masters realized who he was. As a result, they started to hunt him and he wanted to get out of Dodge because obviously he didn't want to go back to the life of slavery. So Frederick Douglass traveled across the seas and he went to the UK. Now because of his writings and several newspapers that circulated around the globe, he was very popular in Europe. His autobiographies were a hit and he found a particular fan base in the United Kingdom, so much so that they actually purchased his freedom from the alt. That's right, in the time that he was in some sort of exile, or at least as a refugee in the United Kingdom, he also was able to gain his freedom from the fans that he had in Europe. It's pretty astonishing to hear about. And finally, after being granted his freedom, since uh, you know those people in England were able to purchase it for him, he was finally able to return back to America and be the voice for the voiceless that he was meant to be. Continue his mission on the march towards abolishing slavery and granting the equal rights to all men and women. And that is just a, an incredible story for Frederick Douglass. And it's so cool to know that people from across the world were able to play such a massive role in this American icon's life. Thank you all so much for watching. If you'd like to check out any of our other historically inspired cocktails, you can find them here, or you can also find them at our website at topshelfhistory.com. Feel free to also check us out on Rumble and Locals. Locals is our community that we are building. It includes all of our patrons, as well as some exclusive content that's really cool for you guys, including behind the bar and after hours. So please feel free to check that out. But from everyone here at Top Shelf History, remember, history is better with a drink. Cheers.